It's the future, but it's kind of now. Takeaway food delivered in minutes, not by road, but by air. Now, this isn't science fiction. It is everyday life in parts of Dublin. You know if you order a coffee, it's going to be hot when you get it. If you order your food, it'll be piping hot. Drones take off on their own, fly on their own and deliver on their own. So who controls them and how soon could they land in the UK? You just kind of see the, the mood music of what's happening. This is going to come in this country, but it's just whether they can, whether they can make it happen quickly. Well, Martin is with me to tell you what you need to know. Hello, I'm Lucy Watson. Welcome to this quick briefing on drone deliveries. First, Martin, to you. I have a cup of tea in front of me right now, but generally I am a coffee girl. How on earth do you drop a coffee safely from the sky? Uh, witchcraft, I think, is the short <laughs> answer. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I'll talk Not what I thought we were going to no, talk about. Well, but I, I'll talk you through the whole process. So this is happening in Dublin. It's been going on for about 18 months. You get your phone out, you go onto an app a bit like Just Eat or Deliveroo. Mm -hmm. uh, you order the coffee or whatever it may be, the groceries you want to get. Then in a distribution centre, which is really a, a small space of a, a car park near one of those kind of, you know, where McDonald's are and things on a, on a retail park. Yeah. They make the coffee, they put it into a paper bag, into a special tray and then slot it inside the drone. And the drone is probably the body of it's about the size. If you imagine um, two motorbike helmets sort of glued together, it's about that size. Okay. Open a little flap, pop the drawer in. The drone then has four little helicopter blades, takes off into the sky up to 65 metres, flies across the Dublin skyline. Once it gets <laughs> near your house, it lowers itself down to 15 metres. I'd assume it would then land yes. on the floor. No, no, it lowers to 15 metres. The bottom opens like a flap. The bag on a string descends down to your thing, stopping quite smoothly so the coffee doesn't spill. I'm smiling away yeah, here. It lands on the ground. The string is then automatically cut. The drone flies away. You go and pick up your bag and you have your coffee inside. Now, with coffee, actually, they do have... Are we just talking about coffee that they deliver? No, no. Lots of you, could, you can order takeaway meals. You can order groceries, ice lollies, eggs without breaking. Uh, Don't believe it. No. Well, the coffee, they have had to make a slightly higher lid. So it, on the landing, it doesn't slosh. But apparently... Any sip hole, though? No, I think there is a sip hole. But apparently, it doesn't, it doesn't spill. It's miraculous. They're that, that smooth and that, and that steady. So is it all to do with how well they're controlled? Because who is controlling them? Well, they're completely autonomous. So it's not uh, a human, you know, you think of drones in this country, you'd have someone yeah. flying something a bit like a sort of a PlayStation control or something, but yeah. on their phone often. It's, it's autonomous. So the computer plugs in the start the destination and the end destination. You do still have a human involvement, though. So in, in the, the office... Presumably making the coffee. Well, you have to be making the coffee, <laughs> yes, in the first place. But you also have human pilots. But one pilot is actually can look after up to 50 different drones. So they're sat in the office of Manor, the company that do this. Mm. They really just have a computer screen in front of them. And the only thing that they're really doing is when the drone gets to near the delivery site and it lowers itself down, at that moment, a camera underneath the drone turns on to show them the delivery site. And they have to physically press a button and say... Lucy has not stood underneath and I'm not going to drop the coffee on her head. Yeah. And they press that button and then it's safe to lower. So that's like a, a safety precaution. But the rest of it is all done completely autonomously. They're, they're flying by themselves. As soon as you started to talk and explain this to me, mm. the idea of a coffee flying through the sky, arriving on my doorstep, yes, nice and efficiently at half past eight before I take the kids to school, lovely, just as strikes me as hugely inefficient. Well, I think if you were just doing one coffee, then okay. possibly it would be. Uh, I mean, one of the first questions I had is, how much is this cost? Yeah. Because I want to know the delivery. Yeah. Cost oh, does, does it mean, what, coffee in London? What, we're talking between four and five pounds now, aren't we? So yeah. Dublin and maybe around the same. Yeah. What, how much does it add on what to have it think? delivered? I mean, this is, well, drones aren't new technology, but this, hence why we're talking about it, is, is a relatively new phenomenon. So therefore costs are higher. Yeah. I mean, OK, what would I be willing... Well, for initially, I'd be willing to pay maybe a fiver mm. because of the novelty factor. Yes. That might go if it became a regular habit of mine. So it is currently €1.99 on delivery. OK. But We're talking £6 then, if yeah, I was to buy for your coffee, coffee in total, yeah. Mm. But that's a, so that's a similar price, the company would say, to if you, if you order a, you know, something from delivery or just eat and you get your takeaway delivered. It, okay. It's the same price. Now, there is... 
extra money comes from the supplier as well. So let's say you'd ordered actually a, a couple of Happy Meals from McDonald's or whatever it might be. The McDonald's are paying a cut and then you're paying the one ninety nine. So it, it, the prices are comparable uh, and it's a startup that's doing it. So they, they, they're probably they're only just breaking even on that. But you'd expect as the technology kind of improves, it is comparable to having someone on a motorbike or a push bike or driving the car with deliveries at the moment. Now, I went to Dublin at the beginning of the summer, actually. Well, June. That's the beginning of the summer, isn't it? I didn't see any, I have to say. So are we talking hugely popular yet? Or we are just in the trial stage? Or So it is only operational in certain areas of Dublin at the moment. Okay. So it's not the whole city. But in the last nearly two years, they've made 150,000 deliveries. Oh. Yeah, it's quite a lot. And uh, How many years have they been up and running, did you say? Nearly two. Two, OK. And they've got a map on the wall with sort of dots, and each dot represents houses that have had more than 50 deliveries in one place. So they are getting a lot of repeat custom of people who like it. I mean, one of the things that deliver is ice lollies, and you can imagine you've got a kid's party. It'd be very cool, wouldn't it, to say, kids? Cool being the right word there, Martin, clever. <laughs> the I mean, that's the entertainment, isn't it, really? Well, forget the clowns, forget the magicians. Exactly. Well, just order. well, it's a novelty. And I was talking to the uh, guy who runs a company called K- Kalua Pops who make the ice pops that are delivered. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, look, it, it has a novelty factor, but novelty then becomes habit. And he, his words were, look, this is the future and get used to it in the UK because it's it's coming. So what about the actual running costs, though, for well, them, for the company? Well, they're a bit um, hidden away because okay. they're a startup company. So I think they'd initially raised £60 million. There's a lot of setting up costs of these things. And there's, mm. there's a lot of other big players, yeah, Amazon's Google, that sort of thing, trying to get involved with this. So I don't know the exact numbers. But they do say that at the moment, with the price point, the delivery can just about wash its face, and you would expect that to get cheaper as time goes on. I mean, the whole goal is that, that it's going to get increasingly more popular, and, yeah. uh, and they'll be making shed loads from lazy coffee drinkers. That, that's what they wanted. Well, not just <laughs> other stuff too. No, I know, other stuff too. Yeah. So other than the fact speed, I guess they're pretty quick at delivering it. Yeah, yeah. What are the other benefits? Well, um, they would say there's several. Firstly, it could be greener than if you're driving cars or, mm-hmm. or, or motorbikes around because they're electric powered, you know, electric batteries. So they're going to be a, a greener alternative. Um, takes traffic off the road as well. You think about the amount of delivery Dick. lorries which are on the road. Um, the other thing is, uh, in different places, we're kind of joking about the coffee thing, but there are other options which have been trialled even in the UK which are patently more beneficial. Things like delivering... Uh, blood, medication, um, defibrillators, they've just done a big trial. So imagine you're in the kind of the Welsh mountains and you think, oh, yeah. we've got to get a defibrillator to someone every second counts after a heart attack. You can fly a drone directly there. One one of the early trials, actually, strangely, was in Rwanda, which is known as the, the country of the mountains mm-hmm. or country of the hills or something. And it was to deliver blood because they have very few hospitals. The roads are terrible. And the time that it would take to get blood to somebody, Mm -hmm. they'd have died by that stage, but the drones could fly straight across long distances. So they were slightly different drones. They looked more like aeroplanes than helicopters. But that sort of thing, you think, well, that makes perfect sense. That's Mm -hmm. a great thing to do. It even makes me think of kind of remote communities when there are earthquakes and um, and. Uh, natural disasters getting medical supplies to them on the in these remote areas of countries like Afghanistan recently that is uh, this could be a huge revolution in terms of of that kind of thing presumably yeah and look on a larger scale imagine you are a soldier in the army and somebody gets injured and you could just pick them up in a drone rather than having to wait for someone to come and medivac them out yeah. you could pick someone up by a drone fly them out or you think actually we need a we need a land rover get a giant drone to come and fly one in land it for you mm-hmm. so they often say with autonomous vehicles anything that is dirty dangerous or dull get the machine to do get it get the machine to do it because why, why why wouldn't you so that's kind of the future but those are kind of big things actually the the kind of what we're going to see i think in more recent years and more more so- sooner is the it's the Amazon deliveries. It's that kind it's of... It's the convenience. It's the convenience, it? exactly. And that, that that's where the money is and that's where all the companies are pushing for at the moment. Now, we're waxing lyrical about the positive side of it and the novelty factor mm. and it's a bit of fun. But some people are against them, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's very legitimate concerns. So if you think of it on a, you know, a, a much broader grand scale, well, more autonomous means fewer jobs you know driving is one of the biggest employers particularly of men in this country various different delivery things if you take those jobs away well you've got a problem then there's the other problems if you look at um, privacy for example the drone as i mentioned has Mm. a camera on it do you want 
more things in the sky flying around with cameras looking in your bedroom window? That sort of question. There's also legitimate questions about safety. What happens if one crashes into an aeroplane or just happens to fall out of the sky, lands on someone's head? And then actually the one which in Dublin is, is vexing people most is, is the noise. These things coming over, they are quite noisy. And I met up with Seamus and Michael who have set up Drone Action D15, a kind of campaign group. Okay. They've got Facebook. Things. Oh, right, so there's a campaign group. Yeah, there's campaign against. groups. And in fact, in some parts of Dublin, they have um, stopped giving them a licence to fly in that area. Or they've not stopped, they've prevented them from getting the licence in the first place okay. for these reasons. I'm just taking a listen to, to what they've got to say. When the drones fly, you hear them, it's very tonal, the noise. You'll, you'll hear them, if you're with your window open, you'll hear them when you're inside the house. When they hover to, the, to deliver, it's horrendous. So a person getting a burger delivered affects the noise spectrum of 300 houses. It flies over 300 houses to get there and 300 houses to go back to base. We have to take great care with, with, with wildlife. In, uh, it, it's an area that, that, that there's great concerns and about people's health and well-being because of the noise of drones. So have you had to um, put Seamus and Michael's criticisms to, to the company or what generally do they say about this kind of thing? Yeah, 300 I'm, houses, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, and I asked about all these things. What, what the company would say on the noise front is that actually when the drone is flying over most of those houses, it's up at 65 metres, so it's relatively high, and they, they would like, if regulations change, to fly even higher. Oh, okay. um, but it's still got to come down. It's still got to come down. <laughs> The company says that they're aware of this, they're working to make noise better, that you know, changing blades or this sort of stuff and technology will continue to improve. But even at the moment, the level of volume is about 58 decibels, which is actually quieter than the conversation we're having at the moment. So they say that that's... You're trying to say we're loud. Well, no, but you, you, you can say that. Um, so that's what they say about noise. On the other things, on, on the privacy point, they said actually n the, the feed from the camera is never recorded, so there's no way that, that that video is being recorded. And also the camera is only turned on at that last moment. Remember I said when it lowers down, they have to make sure that the landing site is clear and the camera looks directly down rather than forwards. Um, and then finally, on the, the safety point... You know, they, they're fitted with parachutes. So if you had a bird strike, for example, it hit a bird and the drone was going to crash, a parachute can pop out and it would land much softer. So even if it was to land on somebody's head, it's not going to do a great amount of okay. damage. And so they're kind of fitted with slowed right down. Yeah, so they say they think they've, they've thought about all these things and it's all mitigated. But, but there are very logistical concerns, especially if projections of what could happen with the number of drones in the sky build up. If you look at yeah. Amazon, for example, they've started doing deliveries in the States. They have plans to do it in the UK and also in Italy. Their plan globally, by 2029, so that's what, four years' time, is to be making 500 million drone deliveries every mm. year. It's big. All just flying around. Flying around. So y the problem is going to become more... Well, the problem, the, the challenges become more acute for those people who don't want to see them in the sky. Which brings me on to my next question. When do we get them? Yeah, well, good question. So the, the barrier at the moment is, is regulation. Mm -hmm. so Are we stricter than in Ireland? It's slightly different, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, if you think... When we've been out with, you know, Karen Man or Karen Woman and with... Oh, yeah. can, can you fly a drone? You have to have line of sight. So you have to be able to see the drone physically with your eyes. Now, that's a problem. Because Here in... At the moment. Right. Yes. So anyone flying drone at the moment has to be able to see that drone from where they're standing mm -hmm. to make sure it's not going to fly into something or crash. And that's a problem because if you've got one person controlling 50 drones, which are autonomous... You, it's impossible. You can't do that. You can't do that. And a lot of it comes down to... And I had no idea about this. If you, unless you're flying over restricted airspace near an airport, over London, for example, if you're just flying through the countryside and you're on an air, some light airplane, you're a pilot, you don't have to have a tracker or anything on your plane. We are reliant on having a human pilot looking with their eyes and saying, there's a plane there, let's turn left and dodge it, basically. That's kind of how it works. And then you have human communication with air traffic control, who might come on and tell you need to do that. So you can't have a human air traffic controller talking to all these different drones, especially as the numbers go up. So the real problem is how do we get around that? And there are lots of companies trying to find ways to really have a kind of a, an air traffic control system, but for drones. And so they've piloted this company called Altitude Angels with, with BT, and they made a kind of a flying corridor. But along the corridor, they'd have sensors and cameras, and they were mm. able to map everything that was in the air. So things that had chips and trackers on, so you knew what they were, and if a small light aircraft wanted to fly through there that didn't have a tracker on, you could it would still pick it up and you could see it. So you can tell the drones then, you know, avoid collision and make mm -hmm. sure it doesn't crash. 
And so that's what they're desperately trying to do, as with all these kind of changing technologies, regulations, like running to try and keep up because it's changing so fast. And what they need to do really is is find a way that they can make it work that allows it to happen with all those things. And and it's it's not very easy to do because you've potentially got lots of these drones in the sky. So how, so how do you go about doing it? So that, that is the challenge, and that's the holdup at the moment. And it's the reason why Amazon, who have got a site in Darlington in the northeast of England, mm-hmm. that they want to make a kind of a, a mini the drone site. or a, dro- a drone site. Wow. They're awaiting planning permission to build it, but they're also awaiting new regulation to come in to allow them to be able to, to fly, fly without way. that line of sight thing. So that, that's okay. the big thing. Is it a foregone conclusion, Martin, that they're coming? Yes, I think, I think it is. So the, 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 the uh, Civil Aviation Authority, the CAA, they're the people in charge of airspace, basically, in this country. They're looking at new regulation changes coming in probably sometime around this winter. The date's not quite mm-hmm. confirmed yet. You just kind of see the, the mood music of what's happening. This is going to come in this country, but it's just whether they can, whether they can make it happen quickly. And you've seen them in action. What did you think? Uh I can't imagine you'd order just a coffee from them, but generally, you thought. Generally, I was I was really impressed just from like the kind of tech geeking side of things, of like how you are a geek, your... self confessed. Yeah, I am, thank you. Um, but the other thing at the moment is it's it's not quite there in the sense you've still got the human making the coffee. They then got to pack it into the bag and they've got to take it. So it, there's lots of inefficiency in there. What you can see is you know five ten years time. Imagine you've got a big automated Amazon, Google, whoever the delivery big company might be where you have robots picking something straight from a factory it drives straight into the drone it flies off and it's all completely automated that's the kind of the that's the real future but then the problem is the weight as well you know at the moment these drones can carry about two kilograms so think you know two happy meals from mcdonald's for example that's probably about two kilograms Mm -hmm. but you you wouldn't be you know Heavy, cheap things you wouldn't be ordering on drone by drone because sorry heavy Cheap things, yeah, you, w- you wouldn't want to do by drone because it's going to cost you too much money. It's not mm-hmm. efficient. It's still going to have trucks and things for that. But those small items that need to get somewhere faster, you can see they've been like a premium service of, you're desperate, oh, I've completely forgot to get this one thing. I need it right now and just fly to you. But ice lollies for kids' parties. It's fun. We can use them for that. Martin, thank you very much indeed. That was really fascinating. <laughs> If you're watching us on YouTube or Spotify or listening on any other podcast platform, hit subscribe to make sure you never miss an episode. We'll be back with more quick briefings very soon. Goodbye for now. 